look, I know, I know, I know. We did a saving saves like a week and a half ago, but this one, this, this is a special occasion because Dr. Benji, that one. Hi. It, <laughs> I was just gonna have your face pop up <laughs> over my shoulder. That works too. He's right there. He he does saves typically on YouTube. Yes. And this one is uh, is Thames. I had I had to look up how to pronounce that actually. Thanks, mate. AFC Thames, like the river in London. It's based around that. There's a backstory of a, of a series I did years ago. But yeah, we've got a, a AFC Thames. It's like a Phoenix Club born again, which I wish hadn't been born. <laughs> and that is what we are trying to fix on this emergency version of Saving Saves. So we're here and uh, Ben will be happy to know that one, not only am I wearing the Everton shirt that my editor Reese sent me just to <sighs> send a message, but two, I have not watched this series, so which is good because I am able to come in uninfluenced by what has happened so far but ben what i'm going to ask yeah. you to do <laughs> not because we... it's not good to viewers not because it's not good just just because he's busy he's a busy guy aren't you you're a busy guy oh, I'm, so... kidding. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting i'm getting seven different graduate degrees at the same time <laughs> while recording 25 different podcasts running seven youtube channels and streaming eight days a week so as few as, few as seven degrees as few as seven okay I, I did also think i was underachieving the point being that i think <laughs> Go ahead and explain to me what has happened and why so many people have come to me recently asking me to save your save. <laughs> yeah, I, I probably get 17 comments a video going, get the guy that's played the game for four years to save your save of your 20 career, 20 year career of this game. Um, I've made a list of things that are, are, are fundamentally wrong with it. Um, would you like me to rattle some off or would you like the history? What would you like first? Dealer's choice. Okay, so the history, uh, we started in, of course, in, in the current season. We're promoted uh, from tier eight to tier seven in 2023. Uh, then promoted the season after that in 2024 2027 rolled around and another promotion so that's three promotions in quite a short space of time of seven years and now we are stuck in the Vanarama National League this is our fifth season in this division see and uh, we're at the January period so we've just started a transfer window and I've thought this would be the perfect moment for you to come in and save the day save the save Zealand yeah yes okay but but before we carry on there are a number of issues with okay. this save. Uh, let me, again, so this, let's say this is our fifth season of 11 seasons uh, with three promotions. We have the lowest wage in the league. We have the worst team in the league. We've got the lowest reputation. Um, our top goal scorer left last year and his wage was nothing. Um, we've got no affiliate club. We've got quite a large debt. You can't do friendlies because the season starts in October. We're semi-professional, which means a lack of scouting. Uh, we're slowly making money. And if we continue at this rate, we will have been, we'll be in profit in 14 years. Good luck. Oh, <laughs> save, save this asleep with both <laughs> eyes closed. Okay, this is where we're going to test him because you do this saving save series and you give advice, but we never see the outcome. So and now we are and now for the first time ever, we will see the outcome of the what your advice leads <sighs> to. Uh, the, so, out the outcome's usually in the comments, the responses to the actual <laughs> video. In the comments. So, it's going to look to your audience like I'm having a midlife crisis. For those that are watching the series, that is exactly what's happening. Every time I hit record, it starts quite hopeful. And then over the course of a 15 to 20 minute period, I slowly descend into madness. So save me from the madness, Zeeland Shannon. Save me. That is what I am here for, Ben. And I, I've loaded in. I am now great, great. in car with AFC Tims. So you, you should have been in this league for five years. Let me take you, come inside. Take, let me take you to the Vanarama National League pre season preview. Uh, you'll notice us down there at 23rd. We are there every year. It's great. So you've made, uh, let, let, here, let's check out, look at where you finished. So 10th, 18th, 11th, 15th. You're now slated for like a bottom mid table finish for the fourth fifth straight year yes yeah, it's, 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 it's a realistic save but no one's on youtube to watch a realistic save. <laughs> <laughs> we are very much living the life of a real football club that just exists with small debts <laughs> at the vanarama national league level which is um it's, it's do you know what? i'm breaking new ground at least for that i'm yeah. breaking new ground it, you're all about the authenticity the grunge of, course, of the game of course so i'm going to go to anal the first thing i'm going to do is go to analysis report analyst report in comparison and i was just clicking through while you were talking and i don't think your team is as bad as you think it is it's now it's it's deceptively bad because of course we do have a few loan players 
that I say a few, two loan players <laughs> that improve us slightly. Um, we can't we can't loan anybody good, really. No one wants to drop their players down to, to play with me. Yeah. That's semi-pro. So they're not loving that. They don't train, obviously. We don't have teams training, really. Do a very minute amount of training. Um, I think in terms of, yeah, you're right. I think in terms of some attributes, like I've tried to create this team to be a bit of a workhorse side. That of course, I'm, and I'm trying. I'm not terrible at the game, so there's there's an element of bringing in players that are slightly above probably where we are as a club. But those players are extremely limited. So when I offer trials to 400 people, see, uh, about three of them say, "Well, oh, go on then. I'll come and play for a bit," and that's problematic. Yeah, that no, that's going to happen. And tell your professional club that's going to happen, which is what, yeah. in my opinion, makes out of the entire ladder the Vanarama National the second most difficult league to get out of. Because yeah. once you get out of this, you can kind of win sprint League 2 and League 1 and then just get into the championship and start getting beaten up again. Yeah, well, ho hopefully hopefully, I've provided some context you have. to why it's quite challenging. And I should say my audience are very much enjoying the struggle of it. They feel they're committed to 70 episodes now. So you don't feel like you have to watch the backstory if you want to come and join in the journey. <laughs> but like we're at a point now where that pain is, is, is in the past and you, Mr. Shannon, are going to solve everything. That's, what yes. I've, that's, that's the conclusion I've come to. So where would you start with a, okay. with, a, with a situation like this? So off the cuff, because I used to do saving saves live, which meant we would have to yeah. go through a ton of them. We would go through them very, well, sometimes very fast, sometimes very slow. And there's some kind of automatic answers to people that struggle climbing the English ladder. So I always look at the team comparison first, and now I'm looking at your tactic. What's the thought process here? Thought process is five years in, I have tried every tactic. <laughs> there's, a, there's, not a, there's, not a, there's not a tactic in this division I've not used and found. So I, I am fully aware, right, that to be successful at this level, you need to find the level of, of, of consistency with a tactic that the team know, are familiar with, can train at a very minute level and be successful with. The problem is I have to try and find consistency in inconsistencies because I have to make a decision, right? Uh, do I to try and beat the sides that are not beatable, these professional teams that are well-oiled machines that are very difficult to stop, or do I attempt to best the sides that I know are around my level and slightly worse than me? And I, I've gone for option two. So I play a relatively attacking system with three centre-backs. Like like I've got the mentality at the moment unbalanced, but you can stick that into attacking and it does a very similar job. Just everything goes a little quicker, right? So this, this tactic is the tactic right now. But again, if you see something in my side, Z, that you think we should change, then I am all ears. So my first thought here, Ben, is that both yes. of these midfielders can go back one. Because my greatest success happens in lower leagues when I basically play a numbers game. This is what yeah. I did in, in Wales to topple the new Saints, is bring both of these... Right, so dro like dropping these two guys is essentially playing this numbers game where this just goes like that typically what this looked like in the past for me and i'm just going to completely massacre what this formation was <laughs> while doing oh it's been it. massacred many times mate it's been this, okay this, okay this, fair this enough is, is like this is what this formation has looked like for me actually this and so if you have people that can kind of play in this system mm. in fm19 this was really effective for me because when you're at this level nobody is actually that good so no. like, is there a team that when you're playing against them and you have, obviously you can't really do this in Football Manager anymore, even though this is what I would kind of do in 2019. I don't think you can do this in 21. Maybe you can, but you'd probably end up having to do something that looked like this. Yeah, I feel like it, it rewards you being more aggressive this year's game. Always, always more so than more than more than previous year's games. Like I've I've done lower league journeys before. I've been through like from tier ten or tier, tier eight and got and got to the Premier League and won things in the Premier League. The problem we've got with this save is that and one thing I didn't mention in all the issues that exist within the save, Brexit has destroyed this type of save. It is incredibly difficult. So what you do before, right, is you'd go to the lesser known European nations and you'd go, I'll take one from there, I'll take one from there. I'll get a few of them. Right. And, I'd, and, and they'd all be in my sides. This year, that ain't happening. Like, you might get the occasion. Like, we had a Finnish guy, the guy that was here last year that left on a free to Birmingham City and then immediately went up a three divisions in terms of quality. Like, he, he was Finnish. It was like a miracle that we got him and the ability for us to find those players and for them to actually join a semi professional side in London. It doesn't happen very often. Like it's, it's very difficult to attract players of a level to take us above those professional sides that are constantly being relegated from League Two.
and that that is why we have such a challenge you you, you don't what the, what the f dude you don't have control over your scouting have you seen my scouts so so they're this not good needs, scouts he's a 15 13. to be fair he brings me pretty good players though his reports are solid he brings me players that i know that i know exist now whether i can get those players usually players of a value there's very little i can do to bring those players in let's go ahead and uh take control of <laughs> of, of this stuff good that'd be, that'd be good yeah. you're gonna have ashley wilson look for end of contracts in england okay that are not just first team level because the first team level is good we want better than good we need we you need better than good right you need superb end of contract players in england they're not necessarily interested in joining me though the key is there will likely be one or two so uh, this I, I don't disagree this is like a good thing people should do if they're doing no league saves i will manually do this anyway so there's always somebody hiding somewhere in some nook and cranny that you just didn't know existed so the no, next, right. one, the next one right. is I sent Paul Carr looking for loan players. Okay. And then Jake Duffy okay. is dealer's choice. You can send him to do whatever you want to send him to do. But leaving it on general focus and having these guys just kind of diddle around. And then when you have a recruiting meeting, they give you one brief report. There's nothing productive going on there. It's always so good to maybe, get some extra sets of eyes. Maybe my understanding of scouting is wrong there. So will he only ever scout players within my scouting range though? That are players that appear on the list of player search that are already there. And the ones of quality are gonna be at the higher clubs ordinarily. So will he only look for those players anyway? Because I feel like I have access to the knowledge he's going to get me. Or will he look for extra players that don't appear in the knowledge that I already have? Or the recruitment package that I already have? We're at the lowest and we're about to run out of money with, with that. It's arguably a waste <laughs> of time. It's, I would not get a recruiting package, okay? I would just not because your recruiting package is literally just your league. Your club already has 100% knowledge of England and then use that money to scout people that aren't in England. Save the 41,000 and use that money to fund those three or $4,000 scouting trips to Finland or wherever else you're going to find this yeah. one guy that's going to improve your team because the money is going to be much better spent there than getting some irrelevant scouting package in an area that you already know every single player. in. So your your big thing you're focusing on here is recruitment. You think, you think yes. my issue is, has, is is constantly being recruitment? Okay, that's well, that's interesting, right? We're in a we're in a January window. I will use what you're advising. I will look. I will scour, and of course, I, I will I, then document yes. what we do. I think the, the this is more like in the summer though, because your scouting budget's already gone, right? It's not coming back. Your payroll budget's <laughs> already like too high. But the the question is always recruitment in football manager. People always want to ask about tactics. They always want to, uh, and like you can screw yourself with tactics. You can screw yourself with dynamics, yeah. right? But as long as you end up with better players than the people you're playing against, it just doesn't matter. Right? I agree. And so the the key here is finding a way, despite Brexit, despite the fact that you have no money, to get mm. people into your team that are just better. Because your yeah. team is the, your, your team is good enough to stick in this league, even though it has the least amount of money in the league. But yeah. you need better players. So so there there are two ways to look at this, right? I am rubbish at the game, or I am massively overachieving to the point where most people, I said this on my stream recently, most people, Z, would have stopped playing this about three years ago. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the most painful bit. They absolutely would. Yeah, you're, you're yeah. kind of insane. You're five years in the Vanarama National, I wouldn't wish that upon my worst enemy. Yeah. Or you. Imagine uploading it as content. Yeah, I... <laughs> Cabbage is pretty good. So, Cabbage Polish striker. Good. Oh, sorry, I thought that was some sort of vegetable commercial. Uh, yeah, yeah, that this cabbage. guy's good. Yeah. You yeah, should yeah. be able to get out of this league with, with Cabbage and Striker. This guy's good enough to get out of this league. Yeah, but the problem is he's one of only like three good players. But you have to play, I, like you've, you've got this short passing thing going on. My number one recommendation in these lower leagues is you're playing a numbers game. Your players yeah. are so bad and so inconsistent. And this isn't just you. This is everybody that's on all I know, of these it just, teams. It just hurts because they're my boys. <laughs> that's fair. They are so bad that like you are essentially just trying to get so many people back defensively that the other team can't score. And when you attack and you attack quickly, you want to get a couple of people in a position like with this formation. There's a couple of people up there so that if you get the ball up quickly, you might just be able to get somebody in. I guess with that specific tactic, I don't have a left-sided player. <laughs> Are you serious? We did a we did a scour job on looking for a left-sided player and, we, and did not find I streamed for four hours and could not find a left-sided player that made sense that would want to join. Arcon is like the only guy that could maybe do it, but lacks Obviously a lot of speed. Obviously he doesn't have speed, but what yeah. if you did like wide midfielder on attack? Yeah, I've tried. I've tried a similar thing. I've tried. I've tried him out there a few times, and he's been 
And so okay. what about like you do that, distribute to a specific player and like give him the ball? I, I played him at midfield left four times and he got a 6.43. So that experiment finished pretty quickly. Yeah. This is a different type of saving saves episode. You run into these from time to time on saving saves. And in Football Manager, you're not able to fix everything with one wave of a wand. You know that and I know that. Yeah. I have decided your third... Uh, the third thing you need to send your scout out for your other your third scout is okay. is a first team level left-sided player <laughs> <laughs> we did we did have one last season that was okay but not great okay. yeah that's like that is specifically what you're looking for and instead of turning it up to like excellent or very good we're just going to put it on good you just need a good left-sided player end of contract yeah but the pro the, I, I mentioned him at the start right we had a, a player called philip elkanainen who if you look at our his transfer history on the outs he went to birmingham cities under 23s and I, the, the dream at the start of the season was to play him alongside cabbage and then i thought oh we're go time and then the very start of the season birmingham went oh you're not paying him we'll take him for a grand a week also i love the fact that you have low <laughs> self-belief is just that's your personality. Did you know that? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I mean, to be honest, it could it could not be more accurate. So, <laughs> yeah, wow, it's, uh, yeah. it's it's a challenge. We're not finished yet. You know, we're not finished yet. That's the, that's the spirit. Well, you need okay. We need to get your scouts out. Right, training is irrelevant because you're a semi pro team. So it does not matter. I don't I don't care how much you want to play the short passing and how good it looks against other teams. You have to play a really direct style and just get numbers. Okay. I'm, I'm, uh, at this point, Z, I will try anything. So let's do it. I'm for it. And uh, I believe in my in my corner set piece routine. And oh, you've got to do a 17 jumping reach and 12 heading. Oh my God, play for set pieces. Get my set piece tactic going where you just get, you just stack the near post and just pump the ball to the near post every time. But if it's, okay. an, if it's an out swinger, you've got Letty making a near post run if it's an in swinger you've got letty lurking near post and put your second best aerial person in the opposite spot you probably are missing out on eight to ten goals a season at, at least man. I mean, okay you're in a league where i'm willing i would be willing to bet there's nobody that can match dino letty's jumping range might be one person and it's probably a really fat tall striker i don't, I don't know i i would i would bet there's a few but probably not like amazing. Yeah. So here's the thing. I do not have on my like my club that it, I finally got into Europe in Portugal. Now, it's not necessarily the same as this. The Portuguese lower leagues are easier to get out of than Vatarama National. But we played from the fourth division up to the top division. Now we're in Europe. And I do not have a center back that has this good a combination of jumping reach and heading on that team. Are we concerned that he's not a great defender? It, uh, look, because because in theory, in theory, based on probably ability, probably my fourth best defender yeah that is so. the problem but it this it look if you can how much how much okay <laughs> I love that, by the way look, I love that 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 is a problem yeah, yeah that's good no, it's a problem but at the same time letty is not he is not that much worse than your other center backs and what he offers on the flip side is perhaps your second best offensive weapon on the entire team yeah no i, I agree with that it's funny because like him and him and Scott are like very similar, and then Allardyce and Marshall are slightly more well-rounded and right. in theory slightly better, but like combination-wise, like Ross Marshall is quite clearly our best defender. So then it's just it's just Marshall and Letty. It's a, like, this could be the future. Like so far, he's got one goal for me in four seasons. So if we can change that this year with your help, then we are we're flying, mate. We're flying. Do you? Yeah. You have a very good aerial team. I mean, you've got to use this. I didn't know how tall Cabbage. Cabbage is six five. He's a big lad. He's a big lad. And so on your set piece, you just need you need cabbage, and and Letty, and that's there's I have no doubt in my mind that that is the best combination on a set piece that anybody in this league can have because it's better than any combination on a set piece that I can have. We'll give it a whirl, and then we'll, we'll, I'll report back. That in the, you have to max out your loans. Like you can build your depth because you're so you're worried about your depth. You can build the depth with either really cheap or free loans of players that are just god awful and they just want to get off their team kind of. Like those youth team into the bench players from the championship. Yeah, I guess my my I hate I hate that I have to give you a counter. I'm sorry that I'm making excuses for my my horrible team. <laughs> so like if you if you go to the loan um like the player search on the available loans because this is obviously how i would initially look for players to begin with and then you put it to doubtful and then you look through some of the center backs that become available to me to loan and you look at someone like aaron pilkington he's awful so and a lot of them are awful so i have to decide at, like i'm basing it on like very specific attributes on whether they join or not 
And ordinarily, I'd prefer someone well-rounded to someone that is a bit of a loose cannon. Oh. I may, maybe that's the wrong I approach. Guess what, I'm, what I'm looking at is when you sort by the contract on these championship youngsters, yeah, everybody, everybody that has a youth contract, they're willing to take a free loan for. And there are about 15 guys here. And each one that I've looked at is good enough to at least be around your team. Probably yeah, not there's a starters. There's a couple but... here. There's, there's a couple here that I actually think are really good that I, I haven't spotted before. So do you know what? See, I thank you for that. Andy. I feel like you expected me to be at, like to me to offer absolutely nothing to you. But I feel like this has actually been, I, this no, has been, no, this no, has no, been exciting. I, I've honestly enjoyed this. This is, this is an area where I think you, you know a lot about. I think you've looked into this area a lot in terms of like recruitment. It's almost like one of those things, right? I've looked at this sort of thing for years and I've been, and, and so I've got like set ways of doing things. And this is why I, I wanted your fresh eyes on this. I, I, the, the, like for example, no point in going to work the space about this. He would have done very similar things to me, I suspect. <laughs> yeah, Whereas, yeah, that's uh, true, that's true. Like Jack, Jack will argue he probably would have done this as well, but like it, it's very handy to have a completely fresh approach to things, which is why you're so successful, Zealand, you know? Yeah. Well, I look, <laughs> and, I, and I cannot stress this enough. To the people watching it on his channel that like you're they're making fun of Ben and they're like, oh, you should have Zealand save your save. This is a very difficult spot to be in. And I think one of the most challenging things about it is once your momentum stops, like once you get promoted and then you stop getting promoted, it is so hard to get the momentum going again. Ooh. What about Alistair Hawken at 10,000 a year? From, is he, is from he the Lincoln, guy? From Lincoln, he's a left-sided midfielder from Lincoln City and he's all pace. I mean... Do, is this is this is this you actually making a signing for me? Because I'm no, all for it. This, yeah, this is. Me. Oh, he's good. He's actually quite good. Yeah, he's ten thousand a year. He's a left-sided player. You can totally swing that. Right. He's in. He's in. See, he's done. Let's go. He's done. Yes. And the and the best thing is right. This video is coming out uh, a little bit in the future. And so if you want to go back and watch how <laughs> Alistair Hocking got on <laughs> after Z recommended him, there are five episodes of Alistair. Oh yes. Um, my big fear is that we will end this recording and another team will take him from me. <laughs> because that happens on a really <laughs> regular basis hey, as well. And then here's the thing, even if that <laughs> even if that happens, you now have this accessible list of players that you know you can go to. Oh, all right, Zealand Shannon. Thank you so much. I, I genuinely feel like I've I've learned some things. I also feel like you've understood my struggle. I uh, yes, I do. I know this is this is the worst nightmare when you do a save like this is getting stuck in one of these spots. And it's and it's uh, the added point to that is that I upload it to my YouTube channel. <laughs> <laughs> so not only yeah, you're stuck in this spot with like thousands and thousands of people watching you be stuck in this spot. Yeah. And people are people are enjoying the stuck in the mud element of this. And this hasn't been saving Dr. Benji saves Z. This has been saving me. So I appreciate you saving me because my mental health is deteriorating season on season. So we are slowly trying to build our way back. I'm gonna turn saving saves into a not-for-profit mental health charity. Oh, this is this is counseling for me. This is not <laughs> that's what this is now. This has just been this has been a good hour of counseling that I've really appreciated. Beautiful. So thank you, Zeal. Yes. I look forward to uh when this video comes out, you'll be really releasing another video i think about how well this actually worked and i hope i, oh, hope I will work well. oh i will okay i look forward right, to it thank you mate yes oh.